and welcome to The New Property Show. I'm Steve McMenamin. On this show, Rory will talk to Joey on interior design. Our panel discusses mindset, success and branding. But first, Geordie on opportunities in Western Australia and Queensland. Geordie, welcome to The New Property Show. Thank you for coming on. Thank you, Steve, for having me. All right, real estate. How did you, uh, how did you get started? Always had a passion for real estate. Uh, purchased a property when I was young, and ever since, uh, always liked to be able to build a property portfolio and eventually turned my passion into a business. So I think that's most important too, is there's a lot of people out there that are selling property, but have actually never purchased one, they're renting, uh, really at the end of the day, uh, I just don't think they've had that experience of going through the pain of saving for the deposit and building up the portfolio. Uh, so you've been doing, I guess, investment advice and real estate and working that. What sort of fields do you work in? So I help a lot of people finding their next project or their next investment. Mm -hmm. I think the hardest part is starting. So a lot of my uh, business also works around education. So helping people understand about property and how to get into the market or how to build a property portfolio. Okay, so I guess the question on everyone's lips at the moment is where, where to invest, where's the best places in Australia? Uh, love to hear your thoughts on it. Right now, our focus is in Melbourne, the western suburbs of Melbourne, so that's the biggest growth area in Australia at the moment, so we're really working in the western corridor at the moment for our clients and finding opportunities that aren't on the market at the moment, so a lot of off-market off opportunities. Are you talking 30 kilometres from the city or 40 k's or a bit more into the regional areas? Uh, no, still in the suburbs. Yeah. Uh, right now, uh, western suburbs of Melbourne, like Melton area, uh, Bonnybrook uh, is a really interesting spot at the moment. So right near Rockbank. So they're really great opportunities in land opportunities and also commercial opportunities as well. I would agree with you as well. Like I, I used to look after that Clyde and Cranbourne area. Uh, and typically what was finding is some of my clients were driving an hour, hour and 20 in. Uh, transport's a little bit hard, you go over to the west, you, you're sort of down to that 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, and probably one of the other advantages that really is the price. So with these projects that you're looking at, uh, it's not only just like land banking, uh, but you're looking at some bigger deals as well. So what, are, what do those deals look like? So some of the bigger deals are in the commercial space. So as the area is becoming more developed and the government are opening the doors to a lot more development, there's a lot of demand for commercial. So for example, childcare, at the moment is very important. So as these new estates develop, uh, there's a lot of big demand for new families coming in to the estates and needing childcare. So that's one of the areas that we're really focusing on at the moment. And property is really just not a transaction. It's really just about the people. So what do you do that's different than, than everyone else? So I don't really focus on product. It's really focusing on the person, on the individual. Mm -hmm. So really looking at their situation and because everyone's different, everyone has different finances, different position, uh, different ages, and really working to tailor a strategy, an investment strategy that works for them. The other thing that I've, I've attended um, with yours quite regularly is you almost run, I guess, well, co-host uh, educational workshops and games uh, as well. So I think it's important when you're talking property to have the right people in the room as well. Um, so do you want to go through how you facilitate these get-togethers? Yeah, so I, I do a regular cash flow game. It's mm -hmm. really good. Uh, it was invented by Robert Kiyosaki, and he really pushes uh, cash flow as king, and I still think that is correct to this day. So I really ha like to educate my clients and potential clients on investing and that cash flow is king, and playing that game board regularly actually helps them understand how to actually build a property portfolio that is positive, uh, that has positive cash flow and that enables you to build that portfolio a lot bigger. And what about if you've done a few deals, do you think it's important to partner up? Do you, do you partner up with people, syndicates um, coming in together, like do you want to go through what a servicing partner might be versus an equity partner? So I, I do partner with a lot of professionals in the industry mm -hmm. in finance, so I have a financial strategist that works with our clients first and foremost, because that is a very important part of real estate, is having the finances to be able to take action on opportunities when they come up. And then also working with great builders and developers that understand clients' needs and wants, and being able to tailor those opportunities specifically to them. I 
I find at the moment is, is some people get a bit complacent. They've come out of that COVID, they're a little bit lazy. Okay. Uh, they haven't done that pre-work, but they're missing opportunities because you know, I mean, the, the day they need to go to auction, they haven't got a pre-approval. So how much work is done prior to buying a property? So there's at least a couple of months prior before to really get people into a position. So our brokers that we've partnered with really work on checking their financial position first and foremost and understanding what they're actually able to borrow because it all depends on the finance, on their purchasing power and then also plays into the strategy that we're going to use in order for them to grow their wealth. If you had a million dollars right now, where are you buying? I'm buying in the western suburbs of Melbourne. Excellent. Um, I'm not in, you know I mean, we've just had a really tough government. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm really pushing people outside the state at the moment. I'm really pushing them down to Queensland, through to Perth, through to South Australia. Um, I see those as growth corridors as well. Um, are, you, are you doing any deals up there? Like, where do you see it going? Definitely. Part of my business is doing a lot of house and land new products for people because that's what people want. And you're right, Queensland and WA have a lot of good opportunities at the moment. And I can see in the market now there's a lot of co-living spaces. And it's a really great opportunity for people to get into that type of investment because there are a lot of people out there that can't afford to buy a house right now. And even just the rental market is absolutely crazy in Queensland since COVID. So a lot of people have moved from Melbourne and made the trip up to Queensland and finding a place is very difficult. So a co-living option has been great for people because it's a great way to get into a brand new property at a great price. And for investors, there's really great returns on offer. Because you're really getting a room. Uh, you're basically renting a room like a studio for under $400 a week that includes your furniture, electricity, everything else as well. So I, I, I support people, uh, I guess, spending less money on their accommodation and using their surplus investing in properties as well. So I would definitely agree with you on the co-living plan. Uh, thoughts on dual keys? Dual keys are also great too. So depending on the location, there are a lot of great places. I know Harvey Bay in Queensland is a real hot spot at the moment. Uh, there's a lot of infrastructure being built up there and there's a lot of uh, growth happening in that area. So dual keys are definitely something that is also a better option than just buying a simple house and land package. Love to investigate this further with you next time. Uh, great topic. And uh, let's talk about the hot spots in Queensland next time you come on as a guest. Excellent. Thank you. Joey, welcome to the uh, New Property Show. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks very much, Rory. Looking forward to um, chatting to you. Absolutely, as always, mate. So, um, Corso Interior Architecture, um, an award-winning um, uh, interior architect firm. Um, so congratulations on that, mate. Tell Thank us you. a little <clears throat> bit more about what you do. Yeah, so um, we're a five-person practice. We're about 10 years old. We're uh, um, interior designers. Um, so we design a lot of um, residential and commercial spaces. Sure. And the awards that we've won in the past five years are around um, actually commercial spaces they're co-working. So Shed Office um, Melbourne Design Awards, we've won three or four in a row, which is really exciting. Absolutely. It's amazing and a testament to what you do. Uh, and I know that you do do a lot of commercial and you do uh, residential as well. Um, what do you find are the, the sort of crossover points? What do you learn from commercial that you can do in residential and maybe vice versa? Yeah, uh, good question. So the, the commercial projects, um, you know, you see in residential things often repeated. You see a lot of things that look the same. Whereas commercial, everything's quite different and no project's ever the same, which is what we really love about it. Sure. So we love to bring that same um, thought process and, and direction towards domestic projects because as a design company, we want to try and keep everything to be a little bit different so nothing's exactly the same. And each project is, is individual, has its own kind of design element to it. Great. I mean, everyone wants their own home, having that, that, that special feel to it and that, that different, different thing that then the neighbours have got. So, um, and I've seen, seen your work up close. So, um, so what, are, what are some of the things that you're seeing? What are some of the trends you're seeing coming through that, that are, um, are gonna, about to hit or, or are going through the industry at the moment? Uh, I think it's quite a common one is... Um, I guess people want this kind of indoor, outdoor space, so there's no okay. barriers. So basically, it might be, say, in a kitchen space and in dining, opening up to outside, where it's like living indoor and outdoor. Okay. Um, and also other things like uh, concrete floors, large kind of void spaces, larger windows, everything's on a big scale. Okay. And often the challenge is that, um, you know, people want all these amazing things, but often don't have the budgets, which is 
really challenging as a designer because we're programmed to make everything amazing. Sure. <laughs> so it's always trying to pull that in and kind of bring it into budget. Okay. So what are some tips there? So um, what are some ways that you're finding we can, um, we can get some great stuff uh, design-wise, but, but mm. maybe pulling the budget back a bit? Well, I think, um, I think every project should have, like everyone's trying to, I guess there's this sense of I want everything. But each, each project's quite different. It has its own kind of context. So what might work in someone's home or, or commercial space mightn't work for someone else. So it's about understanding the project. It's about um, working with what you've got. And there's so many ways when you're spending, you know, 100, 200, 500,000 um, to get all the nice things on a budget. It's just being smart with how you design. Okay. Um, some ways might be like keeping, you know, sizes of things within material um, restrictions. Um, it might be if we're using items like, you know, stone, finishes like stone, instead of 40 mil, you go for 20 mil. And just using things really beautifully rather than trying to, to fit everything in, just kind of um, sure. using it in smaller areas. Okay. So when you go um, to design a project, um, residential or commercial, obviously it's not just you and your team. You're engaging with a whole raft of different service providers. So what are the key uh, people that make up a, a, a great project? Okay, so it depends on the size of the project. Sometimes there's a project manager engaged, mm -hmm. um, but often not. So I guess um, in the residential space, you've always got a, a structural engineer. They're a very important part to the process because often you know, there's limitations with what you can do with steel beams and, and timbers. We don't want a roof falling down, so that's probably an important, uh, 100, 100%. important thing. Um, you've got building surveyors, and of late, in the last, say, three or four years, there's been a lot of red tape. And, um, you know, the VBA is coming down really hard on, on a lot of the professionals. Sure. Um, so, yeah, building surveyors, engineers, obviously a designer. Sometimes we um, engage in lighting designers. Okay. Um, but, yeah, they're probably the three key pillars. And sometimes often town planning is required as well, so a, a town planner. You've seen potentially some, some projects not go to plan. Um, uh, you might have had to come and pick up someone else's mess potentially. Um, <clears throat> or you've just seen some design work that just hasn't been right. What are you finding those sort of errors have been made? I think it's in the execution. Okay. Um, I guess finding the right builder, finding the right tradespeople, and mm -hmm. often that's a hard thing to do these days. Sure. So often what can be designed and visualised, sometimes the outcome is slightly butchered. Okay. So we love to get involved in our projects along the way to make sure that you know people are doing the things that they're saying that they're going to do and that they follow the processes. So often um, that's through a series of reviewing like shop drawings, say from cabinet makers, mm -hmm. just to make sure that, I mean, a lot of people see drawings and it's a different language to them. Sure. So it's been that middle person to communicate to, you know, trades and builders okay. on, on the design deliverables and what's required to get the job done properly. And do you find that, that your clients are getting you to engage those, those builders or do they sort of go out and, and find their own? Or how does that all sort uh, of work? We actually do a mix of both. So being in the industry for 15 years, I've got uh, really good... Um, network of reliable, just honest, authentic people. Mm -hmm. And that's probably a lot of a hard thing to find, especially um, in the smaller type builds. So we often refer builders that we know will get the job done mm -hmm. within, you know, uh, a reasonable um, time frame and budget. Okay. And where do you find, if someone, you know, is, is looking at their own property and, and needing to, you know, um, <clears throat> give it a facelift, really incorporate some great design elements, um, are you looking, uh, and I know this isn't all you do, but it's, you know, is it the lighting? Is it, what are some great ways that, that viewers can say, okay, I need to give my place a, a bit of a lift. Mm -hmm. um, these are some things that, that we can handle and we can, we can go and, and engage and, and do ourselves pot potentially. Um, <clears throat> I think a lot of that stuff, it could just be, I know you heard this a lot, but it could be a simple paint job or even just decluttering. Sure. Often um, people live in small spaces or even large spaces that are overfilled with too many elements. So just pulling back, paring back, keeping things minimal and simple. Okay. Um, just even uh, ceilings and floors often occupy a lot of the space that we live in. Okay. So even just changing, uh, changing your uh, lighting layout and removing what you see on the ceiling, it's a, it's a big space. Yeah, right. Simple things, um, redoing your floors, changing the floor, polishing your slab. Okay. There's heaps of uh, things that we can do, like those examples, just to give it a lift without spending too much. Great. Any, any last sort of thoughts or, or advice you'd, you'd love to give, um, give the viewers about, about what you do or, the, or, or, or helping themselves? I think before you do anything, speak to a professional, because sure. often people can go and start spending money on elements that aren't even required. So it's about 
approaching the whole project from a, like a, a holistic view and not just isolating one or two things, so I'd say just hold tight, speak to a professional, and we can steer you in the right direction. Amazing. Thank you so much for your insights. Thanks for joining me on the new property show. Pleasure, Rory. Thank you so much. We're leading with, uh, with mindset, success, and branding. Who wants to kick off, and how important is it in real estate uh, acquisition? Ladies first. Go green. Oh, <laughs> green means go. <laughs> um, branding's really important. I think it's really important to establish a strong brand with a foundation. Um, with my brand, Co Green Advisory, as you can see, I'm wearing green. Um, I grew up uh, many years in the medical profession, and there's a lot of codes. In the hospital setting, um, I've been a nurse for a number of years and I had a lot of people through the pandemic um, talking about property, a lot of savings, and I just feel that, um, yeah, Code Green Advisory is stemming from Code Green. There's no Code Green, but we say green means go, so buy that perfect property and we support you with that. And I really want to see... Um, Women in this space, a lot of nurses um, buying their first home, so I'd like to empower women um, and men, uh, but yeah, anyone that wants to buy their own home, that would, that's my dream, to empower people to buy their own home, first home investment, build a property portfolio. So I think it's really important to have an established brand uh, and then I'm a people person, so yeah, put um, yeah, the brand, the people, people and property and code green, green means go. Well, over here to my right, we have Code Red. Uh, code Red. <laughs> Let's just stop it. Red <laughs> yeah. So, Eleanor, um, your thoughts on that? Obviously, you, you've dressed quite, uh, quite violently, uh, quite, <laughs> quite strong. Um, branding for you is about, I guess, standing out, and obviously you're up to four books. But what are your thoughts on branding? The word personal branding has the word person in it. Not corporate brand, not anything. It has the word person in it. Mm -hmm. And one thing that cannot be duplicated is your aura, your signature, mm -hmm. your energy, the whole alchemy that is you. And when that can be packaged and presented in a way that allows other people to understand you, and it's like looking at a Mona Lisa instead of a Picasso, you cut through so many fake, so many pseudo advisors, coaches and the like, whatever it is in any industry industry. And the more that you work on your brand, someone can bury you alive. It's not going to change your value because that is how strong a brand can be. We all buy into brands and there are professionals who think they're above branding or even businesses who say, oh, this isn't for me, not knowing that their conditioning and how they work and what they're drawn to is branding. It is a tool in your toolkit that you want to have because if you don't have it, then what are you, a carbon copy of everything that has been and done? That's not revolutionary. That's not adding real value into the marketplace. And we don't have a lot of time to really sit there and get into the heart of someone. I mean, that takes time. But a brand can cut through that noise and allow everything that isn't being said to be said. Excellent. Zed. <laughs> I love beating that. <laughs> it sounded like I was listening to a radio. It was so cool, you know, soothing too. <laughs> I feel like the minute you wake up, you're a brand. The way you hold your posture, you're a brand. And um, I remember my father, when I was 14, he told me, he said, even if you go to a milk bar, make sure that you look sharp. Because mm -hmm. God judges you on the inside and humans, they judge you on the outside. They say that not to judge a book by its cover, but the reality is we all do. So I think it's important to be always be focused on building your personal brain because, like I said before, there's only one of, one of you out of 8 billion people out there. So you are a brand on its own. Like when I came up with uh, Zolt, for example, yeah, mm -hmm. I created a new word in the dictionary. <laughs> I didn't need people to believe in it. I believe in it. So that's what selling starts and businesses start, as long as you believe in you. And do the right thing by people out there. Give value because the marketplace doesn't pay on the basis of what you want. It pays you on the basis of who you are, what you are, and that why is going to drive you. And there's, you need enough reasons to get you to that end destination. So for me, when it comes to branding, I go, you are the brand. If I sleep like, sit like this, that's a brand. If I stand like this, sit like this, that's a brand. You are a brand. So be very, very specific. Be careful of how you hold yourself. 
Oh, that's not a brand. Eleanor's a brand. You're a brand right now. You look pretty relaxed right now. <laughs> She's like, go green. Let's go. <laughs> Buy something. Let's go. Let's do something. You know what I mean? So we're a brand. Everybody's a brand here. And I'd like mm. to really touch on something here with Mark. And there's something that I noticed about you in all your videos. Uh, you're always wearing a hat. Always got the hat on. Um, Love it. <laughs> so talk to us about your interpretation of brand and, and how you stand out. It's, it's really... Um, well, it's echoing what everyone else said. It's being recognisable and memorable. It's, you've got to just trigger that, you know, like, straight away. When someone sees you, they know what the message is. And, you know, I mean, Go Green's brilliant. It's like, <laughs> first time I've met you today and I'm going to remember it. So, yeah, you've done it really well. Um, and obviously we've seen Zed around a lot. First time I've met you today, but I'll remember what you've spoken about. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what the thing is. It's like triggering that to get it, you know, implanted on people's memories instantly and recognisable, so when they see you again, it's triggered back to what that was. It's like, yeah, you, know, you remember a song, like, and it triggers you know, how you felt when you first heard it. Mm. It's, it's exactly that thing. So you want to you know, tie that brand into how people feel. I'm going to ask a personal question here. So the second topic that, um, in this debate today, and hopefully we can debate this, is mindset. Now, it's a big word, mm -hmm. um, but really... How do you sharpen your own mindset? Are you giving yourself visual cues at home? Are you listening to audio? Uh, are you getting coaches? Um, I'd like to hear the version of mindset and what it means to you and how important it is to have a really good one. Who's up? I can start. We can talk about all these positive affirmations and things that make people feel good. But at the end of the day, if you're taking that and putting that on a weak foundation, then people aren't going to be able to fundamentally take action on that. Because until we make our unconscious belief system conscious, it's going to continue to run us. Personally, I'm in a stage of absolute destruction of beliefs and identity suicide, for lack of a better word, of what doesn't serve me. Because within that process of destruction is a beautiful stage of rebirth and replacing any level of disempowering beliefs into one that empowers us to achieve what we want. Because at the end of the day, no one is coming to save you in any way, shape or form on any frontier in your life. And if your patterning is not conducive to you being all of who you are and as much authenticity, which, which is spoken about in branding as well, to come out, then it is your duty to get in there and do that inner work. And a lot of that inner work isn't adding on or stacking on things as to what you think you know, but actually letting go of what you thought you knew to allow for more truth, more fuller inner expression of yourself to come through. And in today's day and age where people are A, so plugged in, B, so attached to their thoughts and their identity and their ego that comes with it, it is a luxury and a privilege to be able to get into the depths of self in order to give even more gifts and value to the world. Very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, go green. <laughs> Sorry. That was an amazing response. That's hard to follow. <laughs> um, me personally, I feel like we're all on a journey and I think um, I find a morning routine really helpful, having a morning routine, an accountability partner or friend or family member. Uh, I find something that really helped me personally was having a mindset business coach that we catch up with, almost speak every day. Um, she's become a really good mm. friend of mine, so I feel that coaching mindset, um, having someone that's actually, like my mindset coach is a buyer's advocate, a very good one in Sydney. So I find that that's really helped with me with my career journey and she keeps me accountable. Um, she's really strong-willed and um, yeah, having that person to bounce ideas off and say, how do you think this would go? She's and I think really that's good. really beautifully said too. As I said, we've got power over here and destruction, but you're, you're rebirthing, <laughs> sorry. Um, and on the other side, tranquility. Um, but uh. um, but it, it is a mindset, and mindsets can change. Um, mm. Because today, as you've come in, you may have got a phone call you didn't want to get, um, something mm. may have annoyed you, and your mindset could be different daily. Now, that's called, that's a distraction. Now, a strong mindset will get through that, but there's also emotions there. Mm. Um, Mark, your, your version of mindset. Look, I suppose to paraphrase Henry Ford, like whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. It's like you know, you've got to have that underlying belief and you know, set goals and see yourself in that future state. You know, so there's no doubt that you'll get there. Um, and 
you know, really, that's, you know, that's what it's about. And it's about, you know, what works for you as well. Like I see people talking about, um, you know, getting up in the morning and doing things and all that sort of stuff. I'll be very clear, I'm not a morning person, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'll get stuff done later in the day, but that was, that's what works for me. Mm. So it's not about going and buying into what somebody else says the version of success is. It's what works for you and what's going to get you to that future position. I'd probably just like this, just say there is if everyone just got up at 7am and went to bed to 11 o'clock, yeah. nothing would get done. No. Um, mm -hmm. So we, we need the night owl. Mm. Um, mindset for you? For me... <sighs> I think what I do in order to keep going, uh, I asked a client of mine, a, a very you know, well-known architect in the country, and I said, what does success mean to you? And what's your mindset? He said, success means a continuation of success. Hmm. You can have success in one project. For example, you can have success in one book. The next book could be down here. But you know, people are expecting you to elevate from there. Her second book was amazing. So for me, what I do is I... Listen to audio books and I listen to Liz Brown or I listen to Jim Rohn every single morning. Because if I start my day in a positive way, it controls the spirit of the day. And when I'm on the phone, for example, when my, when my client rings me, how's your day going, Zed? I go, unbelievable. <laughs> like, why are you doing unbelievable? So positivity feeds positivity. Mm, so 24-7, I'm po mm. spreading positive energy to the world out there. Mm. And happy mind, happy body. So mm. then I go, happy body, happy mind, that balance. And mm. then I got asked, a, you know, I did a podcast last week that said, what's the best fashion advice you can give to people? I said, the best fashion advice <laughs> I can give to people is look after your mind yeah. and look mm. after your body. That's true. Because you can just be, a, you know, an mm. overweight person. With this, there's nothing wrong with it makes people happy. Mm. But the reality is you could wear a Versace top, for example, and be an overweight person. You still need to got some hip, you know, oh, I've got to get rid of that. I've got to get mm. rid of that. <laughs> so then... I think the mindset for me, it starts with me believing in myself, working hard on myself, then I can do good on my job, if that makes sense. It starts in the mirror. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So whatever you reflect, like before I bought my car, I'm like, all right, I've got to have that you know, in front of me every single day. I wake up, there's my goal there. Mm -hmm. Get up. I put in branding, Z Real Estate Sold. It's branding 24-7 in front of me. You've got to sell something today. Don't go mm -hmm. home. So it's positivity 24-7. Mm. Listen to something positive. And then surrounding yourself with this type of environment, because this room's like mm. buzzing right now with energy. I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Scared to go home. <laughs> um, so, guys, uh, it's, a, it's a really good debate, and obviously this is something um, I've really thoroughly enjoyed today. But I'm going to leave with uh, one thing, and, and you did kind of give away the segue of um, the word success. Um, so with that, what does the word success mean to you? Uh, and how would you, um, what's next? So just a quick 20 seconds, word success, and what does it mean to you? I'll go with that. So success, I think, is about having the freedom. That's um, yeah, not necessarily a financial thing, although money definitely helps. So, mm -hmm. But the freedom to be able to you know, do what you want, when you want. I know it sounds a bit cliche, but... Yeah, if you decide you want to you know, take off for a couple of months, go for a couple of months. Okay? Come back, things will still be running. So it's, that's, that's you know, where success is for me. Excellent. Who's next? I can go. Success, there's a worldly success, the conditioned success that people will tell you that you need to have. And whilst that can be fulfilling, being able to discover and awaken deep and deeper levels of awakening within yourself and discover more truth is an infinite realm. So for me, that spiritual success is just as important as any success faced in the real world and being on the path to that is a privilege. Excellent. So you're saying success beyond imagination and this, uh, and this world. I love the answer. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Zed? I think success to me means I'm very family orientated. You know, I wouldn't be where I am without my family. So having the family gather, gathering a, around on a Sunday uh, and having a blessing of my mum and dad and the family around me, that's what success means to me, being able to provide for my mum and dad that's been through a lot. So my why is my family, so my success is my family. And if there's two things that we notice here that's significantly different about you, is your brand says one thing and it's true, but success means another. So your brand is your business, but success is your family. And yep. that's why you do it. And that's why you have such a good brand. So well done. Excellent answer.
Thank you, Steve. That's okay. You're my family too. He's your wife. Well, kind of. <laughs> anyway, uh, go green. Um, I think success is a incredibly personal thing, and it means something different to everyone. But um, for me, I think success is a journey, and it's infinite. It doesn't stop. So I think. Um, having like a vision, a dream, a goal of where you want to be, what you want to achieve, what um, in life, what you want to do, and then successfully achieving that, that's something really rewarding and powerful. Cross, I want to leave on this closing uh, remark. Success for me is this moment right now. I think it's living in the present. Um, it's relationships that you've built from a long time ago. Mm. It's from a espresso martini <laughs> <laughs> um, and having a discussion late at night with some peers is from you and I spending some time together <laughs> and meeting together and getting to know your business and markets for you being a great mentor and friend for over 10 years. But what it's about is bringing people together. It comes back down to the people. So yeah. guys, I'm really, really grateful. It's been a great episode. Um, really was hoping for a great debate, but I think <laughs> what we did is give a great message. So thank you so much for coming on the new property show. Thank, thank you, Steve. Thank, thank you, you, Steve. That's all for this week. Thank you for joining us. If you want to see the full interviews, check out our website, thenewpropertyshow.tv. We will see you again next week.